L-carnitine, often misused, very oversold at the moment. Not that it's not useful, but product companies that make them, they don't explain how to use it, when to use it, what to take it with. And that really frustrates me. It's not like other supplements where you can just take it and it'll have the effect. Uh, not that all supplements are like that, but a lot, you know, say creatine, you take it any time of the day, it just adds to your creatine stores or phosphocreatine stores uh, and accumulates in your body as a reservoir. L-carnitine, however, it needs a little, uh, it, need, it needs a little sort of motivation to get into your muscle tissue. Now, in your muscle tissue or in any tissue in your body, what it's going to do is it, it helps fatty acids, long chain fatty acids, get into the mitochondria. Mitochondria. Sorry, I'm going to pronounce my T's. Mitochondria of cells uh, to be burned uh, to create ATP, or to be. Uh, it's the process of beta oxidation, which is part of the citric acid cycle uh, slash Krebs cycle. So carnitine is like a mediator or a transporter. It takes uh, fatty acids through the membrane into the mitochondria. The fat usually can't do that by itself, so it needs this. Now, that makes carnitine basically a limiting factor in beta oxidation of fatty acids. So once you run out of your carnitine stores, what's going to happen? Well, you're going to switch more likely to um, glucose uh, use. So you're going to start sort of uh, going into kind of uh, glycolysis and uh, and the breakdown of the glycogen from your muscles and, and, and you'll use that as an energy source instead. Well, not instead, but as a higher proportion. Now, what you probably know from using glucose is that uh, it increases uh, lactic acid production because of uh, what partly uh, as, as a result of being uh, a oxygen independent process. Now, what L-carnitine does as a supplement, we've discovered in the last 10 years is um, it needs to it needs an insulin transporter to get into your muscle tissue so what they discovered is that you need a uh, some kind of co-ingestion of carbohydrates or something that create uh, triggers an insulin response for l-carnitine to get into your system to be absorbed um, like I say, carbs, carbohydrates, fast carbs are best straight after a workout when you're probably going to take fast carbs anyway. Um, whey protein also create, um, triggers an insulin response, another good one to take it with. Uh, leucine, uh, BCAAs trigger insulin response. So basically that insulin that comes out to see those guys and put those away into uh, into storage or for use. Uh, they'll also it'll also take the L-carnitine and stuff that in your muscle as well. And once you've got a reservoir of carnitine, what you can do or what your body can then do is use it um, as a substrate for the for the fatty fatty acid burning. So it it won't run out as quickly basically. Um, that means that during low to moderate and even high intensity exercise. The, the translocation of, uh, of fatty acids into the mitochondrial matrix can continue for longer. So it basically means you're going to continue your fat, the, the use of fat as a, as a source of fuel for longer. Um, that's it, because this is a short video. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is basically take your L-carnitine, if you get one, a liquid one like RSP make, uh, I think, uh, like I said, like BPI make one as well, I think. If you use your liquid L-carnitine or, or any kind of um, sort of straight L-carnitine supplement, then you, you really want to take it with carbs or, or protein, basically. Uh, and the faster they are, the, 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 the more effective they'll be. And a good time to do it is straight post-workout because everything in your body is primed to absorb all these nutrients. So with your post-workout carbs and your post-workout protein, whack some of this in there, drink it, everything will get absorbed. Bob's your uncle. Dosage-wise, um, some straight L-carnitine, something around 3,000 milligrams total per day. So you could take half of that after your workout with your post-workout shake, and you could take uh, some of it post-lunch, post-breakfast, whatever's the most uh, carby meal of the day, probably. Um, and just quickly on other forms of L-carnitine, acetyl L-carnitine, acetyl L-carnitine, 
uh, can be absorbed a lot sort of easier than straight out carnitine. Now, it doesn't mean go out and just use uh, acetyl L carnitine. Uh, it just means it, you'll find that in your diet pills and your powdered supplements because um, you often don't take those with uh, with carbohydrates or or, or, a, or another, you know, insulinogenic uh, food. So you'll find Alcar, acetyl L carnitine, in, in stuff like capsules and, and powders, whereas... Uh, I found the liquid stuff to be just really easily controlled, uh, dosed, it, it tastes better and it's just more interesting, frankly. Um, so that's it, that's a quick video, Alcarnitine, go.